Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. My name is Ace and I got more TF2 commentary. Playing as a pyro, as you can clearly tell, rocking of course the back burner because as the title should have given away by now, the back burner is the main topic of this video. For those that are interested, I am using the flare gun and the extinguisher as my secondary and melee weapon. Unfortunately, these weapons will not be used to their full potential in this match because I'm using the back burner. And it's just a lot harder to really use them to their full potential in a match like that with a primary like this. Nonetheless, we do get some decent kills. And I think that most of the things that I can say about the Air Blast are already said in my vlog video. Which I did not too long ago. So if you go to my TF2 playlist, you should be able to find it. Nonetheless, the back burner does in fact have an Air Blast. Which makes it, for me personally, a straight upgrade compared to the vlog. Unfortunately, it does come with a 150% increase in air blast cost, which means it takes 50 ammo for each air blast. But luckily enough, they balance that out with the 100% crits that you gain while you attack somebody from behind. But I do find that a lack of a good air blast is just taking away one of the base and fun uh, like one of the strongest fundamentals about a pyro these days so 50 ammo for an air blast doesn't seem too bad right a full flamethrower 200 ammo for air blast in total all right seems okay unfortunately what some people tend to forget for some reason is that once you use one flame particle which makes let's say one ammo used you can only use three air blasts more so what I find in combat, or while I'm fighting somebody, that I usually only have two air blasts that I can rely on. And the, the back burner is not really a weapon that is meant for air blasting a lot. So I guess I can understand that. And it kind of makes sense, because you're, you're supposed to flank people with it, right? Unfortunately, if you are fighting against decent to reasonable skilled people or higher, they will have some kind of situational awareness, right? And even if they are somewhat aware of the back burner and its actual stats, then they will know that air blasting is kind of a problem for a back burner. So if you're fighting a soldier as a back burner pyro, reflecting all the projectiles is kind of an issue. Same thing if you're fighting a demo or, I don't know, a huntsman sniper for God's sake. It's gonna be an issue and that will be used against you. So if they are, if they are aware of your position or they are aware that you are using a back burner, they will use it against you. Now the back burner does have its uses against a team that doesn't know it's going to get flanked. So catch them by surprise or if they have little to no situational awareness. And it, it, I have to say it is very satisfying to hear those crit flames going on on multiple people that are not paying attention. It's like it adds insult to injury even. Like I am applying the insult to their injury because they're burning a life. And they are dying because of their own stupidity. And it, it does give me a strange feeling of satisfaction, I suppose. I just find that overall, having a good weapon, like having the good air blast, with either the stock or the degreaser, for example, is just a lot more reliable against decent to good skilled people. And I think that most people will have to agree with that. The back burner does have its place, and it's, it is very satisfying. I just find... That the degreaser is the best flamethrower in my opinion, followed by the stock. So, perhaps I'm wrong, perhaps I'm missing an entire point, but I think I've got it covered here. So let me know what you think, and I will catch you guys next time. Take care.